Hey everybody, it's Tim from God Guns and Good Times. Man, did you guys watch this debate last night? By the way, February 25th, 2016. Man, this just opened up a whole uh, a whole new uh, chapter in the political decline of our country we live in. The fact that, literally, in my in my opinion, you are witnessing the absolute destruction of uh, what I would call a democratic process. How many people out there, honestly, how many people out there are interested in voting for a candidate who is not a, a Republican established kind of a person? And like I said, or I've said previously, I don't care what anybody says. That guy Cruz is a Republican embedded kind of a guy. He's a politician. Rubio's a politician. How many people out there are actually willing to vote for somebody who is not a political uh, pundit? a political uh, professional, if you will. I'm certainly one of them. I'm not going to vote for either one of those guys, which means I'm going to be voting for a Carson or a Trump, depending on which one is still left standing. But what bothers me, guys, is that crap last night. Both of them, left and right of Trump, just throwing uh, haymakers, left and right, doing their best to circumvent democracy. That's what you're witnessing. You're witnessing the circumvention, is that a word? Circumvention of democracy. Why? Because 33, 34, 35 percent of the public out there and more are going to vote for Donald Trump. That's a fact. That is what we are seeing. And guess what? The political establishment, man, these idiots are totally freaked out by that. They have no clue what to do. Remember when Trump first came out, guys? Trump was like, everybody was laughing at him. Oh, my God, this guy, you know, he's a joke. He's just trying to push his own brand. He's a, a brilliant entertainer and all this shit. He'll be gone, right? This guy's going to disappear. He'll be gone. And then what happened? He started doing better and better and better. And now the Republican establishment is totally freaking out about it. My, what is going on? We can't get rid of this guy. He says he's going to ban every single Muslim. No problems. His polls go up. He said he's going to ban immigration from Mexico. He's not going. He's going to put a wall up, block all immigrants from Mexico. What happens? His polls stay the same or go up. He's going to build a wall and let this um, let Mexico pay for it. Everybody says that's it. That's a death nail. Donald Trump is done. Guess what? His polls keep staying the same. Are going up or going up? It is amazing to me. So what happens? What does the political establishment do? We got to destroy him. We're going to talk about how he is uh, going to put liberal judges on the court. We're going to talk about how the Second Amendment is going to be decimated with Donald Trump in the office. We're going to talk about how he gave money to every single Democrat, and they conveniently leave out that Donald also gave you morons money as well. When he's frankly said that to us all along, hey, I gave money to Republicans and Democrats. I played the system. I worked the system, and guess what? I'm proud of it. It's there to work, and I worked it. I'm a businessman. And then he says that I'm going to teach you how to work the system, or I'm going to fix the system to make it fair for everybody. It is so over-the-top disgusting what's going on to me. The worst part about it, 35 36% of us who are going to vote for us, what are they going to do? They vote for him, excuse me. What are they going to do? They're not going to come out and say, hey, guys, don't vote for Trump. Of course not. They're going to try to destroy him. Now, if they can destroy him, if they can prove that Donald Trump has a little kink in his armor, there's 5% of these people, 6% of the people voting for Trump out there will probably flake out and run away, which could give the election to a Rubio or a Cruz. And guess what they've done, guys? They've circumvented your vote. They have circumvented your vote. They don't have to tell you not to vote. They're going to ruin him so you can't vote for him because he'll be gone. That's what they're trying to do. The decline of democracy, the decline of modern civilization's democracy is happening right now as we speak. Even if it's total trash, okay? Look what Harry Reid did in the Senate regarding Romney's taxes. Remember that? And he freely admits at the end of the process when Romney was a, a fading past candidate, oh, I can say what I want in the Senate. That's exactly what they're trying to do. They're trying to put enough doubt in enough people's minds that they will go over to another candidate, which makes Trump vulnerable so one of these other guys can come up and take his place. That's exactly what they're doing. They're circumventing your vote. They're circumventing 
my vote potentially in the future. And again, I don't know who I'm voting for just yet. It's going to be a Trump or it's going to be a Carson. But I'm telling you right now, this is bad news. And you saw it explode on live television last night. Of course, you know who I really blame in this, guys? I blame the media. I blame Fox News. I blame CNBC. I blame them all. You know why? What have they been talking about for a solid week before that debate last night on February 25th, 2016? What did they talk about? They started talking about how Rubio and Cruz should get together and both go after Trump. What did they do last night? They went after Trump. They started talking about, I watched this on NBC, MSNBC and Fox, the Morning Joe show and Fox and Friends and all these other shows, how someone's going to go after Trump regarding this bogus Trump University thing. What did they do last night? They talked about how Trump has hired a lot of employees. On the news, they broke a story about these Polish people that Trump hired. And Miralago down in uh, uh, Palm Beach, Florida, about all the uh, foreign workers he had to bring in. So what did they do last night? They attacked him on this. The media is feeding those two morons exactly what to say. So the media is complicit in this. The media is also trying to take away your democratic privilege of voting, of speaking your mind. What is this? Is this Iran? I respect Iran more because if you open your mouth and you talk in Iran, you know you're going to die. But here, if you open your mouth and you talk, they'll work around the back door to ruin whoever you're trying to, uh, to, to, to enlighten, to bring up, to vote for, in essence. Very frustrating to me. What does that mean for you guys? That means you got to, instead of just getting on Facebook and on Twitter and joining the Trump group here and the, and the American Patriot group there on Facebook... You got to make a video. You got to get out there. You got to talk about it. I'm no political uh, genius. I just started getting involved in politics probably 10 years ago. It really became interesting to me. A lot of what I'm saying people aren't going to agree with. That's fine. I don't know everything, but I have an opinion, and my damn opinion is worth it. And my opinion is you are seeing the decline of modern civilization when it comes to what is going on with the uh, the 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 way they are trying to destroy the political process. Why can't the vote just happen? Isn't that how it's supposed to work? Primary, we vote for who we want. Whoever gets the most delegates wins the primary. They go on against the Democratic candidate, and the, the country has a chance to hear and debate, and then a vote is cast, and in November we have a new president. Isn't that the way it's supposed to be? Geez, that's what I was taught in school. I wasn't taught that, okay, you cast a vote and then the political establishment's going to try to do everything they can if they don't like who you're voting for and completely trash you behind the scenes. And that's what's going on. Guys, you need to stand up. You need to fight for what you believe in. You need to be vocal. You need to get off the computer instead of typing 140 characters on Twitter. And uh, I love Donald Trump, uh, you know, meme out there on Facebook. Make a video. Talk about it. Get involved. Don't let them destroy everything that we have fought for 222 years as a country, whatever the, the, the amount is as a country. Don't let them destroy that because that's what they're trying to do. That's what the political establishment is doing. They will lie. They will throw bombs. They will do anything they can to destroy a candidate even though it may not be true at all. You know what's funny, guys? They did the same thing to Ronald Reagan. They did the exact same thing to Ronald Reagan, as a matter of fact. And I've got some notes over here I want to read you. Uh, just a couple things from this list of notes, because I found it so intriguing. I had to print this stuff out so I could get it right for you. But the first thing I want to say about this Ronald Reagan, man, he went through the same thing. Now, Ronald Reagan arguably was a politician. Obviously, he was a governor when he was running for president originally. Donald Trump is not a governor. I get that. But there's an entertainment factor going for both of these guys. He's a big multi-billionaire businessman. By the way, who gives a crap if he's worth $10 billion or $3 billion? I mean, come on. Who cares with his tax return crap? Number two, Ronald Reagan was an actor, so there's some similarities there. Do you realize, guys, Jerry Ford, during the first election, you know what Jerry Ford said about Ronald Reagan? He said this. He said, I'm not scared about a governor, Ronald Reagan, starting World War III. 
but I'm very scared of a president, Ronald Reagan, starting World War III. How many times have you heard that about Donald Trump? We're going to give this guy the, the codes to the missiles. Oh, my God, some country's going to make him mad, and he's going to walk into the Oval Office and hit the button, and, and we're all dead. They called Ronald Reagan the fascist gun in the West. Do the research. I did. The fascist gun in the West. A play on the fastest gun in the West. Calling him a fascist. Okay, obviously his uh, his cowboy acting career. You know, they brought that to light. Interesting, isn't it? And it went on from there, guys. And again, I just want to read you a couple of these because I think it's important. Wall Street Journal, guys. October 30th, 1979. Douglas Hallett who was a former, former aide to uh, Richard Nixon, he claimed Ronald Reagan's decline in opinion polls and his inability to attract support of opinion leaders. What's an opinion leader? Political establishment. How about that? Media. Suggest there are strong doubts regarding his ability to confront tough foreign and economic problems. How many times have you heard that said about Donald Trump? Guys, you could put Donald Trump's name in here. Former aide to President Obama claims Donald Trump's decline in opinion polls and his inability to attract support of opinion leaders suggests there are strong doubts regarding his ability to confront tough foreign and economic problems. You can put Donald Trump's name in this stuff all day long. How about this? The New York Times, March 12, 1980. Nearly one-third of the Democrats and Republicans polled after they leave the polling places. This would be an exit poll, right? Rate Ford a better candidate than any of the Republicans in the race. How many times on the news have you heard a political, or not a political, but a media pundit say, well, I was outside the polling place in uh, South Carolina, and we were talking to a lot of people, and they all, it seems like, you know, they're going to vote for uh, Cruz or Rubio. Interesting how that works. How about this? In December 1979, The Economist the Economist warned that Barry Goldwater's 1964 defeat, Romney's defeat, underlined the old warning that candidates easily nominated are by no means those with the best chance of being elected. Interesting. This was all said about Ronald Reagan, guys. Ronald Reagan's rise to political greatness and political stardom. In February 1980, Washington Post political reporter Haynes Johnson Wondered, at, wondered whether, excuse me, Reagan's loyal legions will stay with him to the end, and if so, whether they will be able to avert the final crash. That's talking about you, and that's talking about me with Donald Trump. The loyal legions around Trump. Are we stupid enough to hang with this guy to the very end? Because after all, he's going to crash and burn. Are we just not going to vote? Because after all, I heard it said yesterday on the news, which would be the 24th, of February 2000, or tw yeah, 25th of February 2016, that Donald Trump has all these white racists who are voting for him, white supremacist groups. Interesting what they think about us. As late as March 2nd, 1980, Gerald Ford said, another uh, a brilliant statement by Gerald Ford, every place I go, everything I hear, there is a growing, a growing sentiment that Governor Reagan cannot win the election. And we can't afford to have a replay of 1964-slash-Romney's defeat. I find this stuff so interesting, guys. The parallels between a Trump and a Reagan. Now, I'm not suggesting Donald Trump is Ronald Reagan, so don't start putting comments in the uh, comment box about Donald Trump is a no Ronald Reagan. Uh, uh, okay, I agree. Donald Trump is not a political person. Donald Trump doesn't give us all of exactly what he's going to do in terms of these statements he's making. But guess what? Ronald Reagan didn't either. Ronald Reagan was asked at a debate how he plans on defeating the Russians and tamping down the Russian threat. He said, and I quote, we're going to beat the Russians and that's it. Next question. Don't believe me? Look it up. Okay, there's similarities between these two guys. Finally, it was not until Reagan had won 206 delegates, 206 delegates to George Herbert Walker's, George Herbert Walker Bush's 47 that establishment Republicans finally began to endorse him. Why? To head off the perception, as the Washington Post put it, that he couldn't win in the general election. Amazing. 
247 votes to 47, and they finally decided, hey, this guy's for real. I don't know, guys. I'm obviously loud about this. I'm upset about it. I watched that entire debate last night. It was more like uh, the Thrilla in Manila, right? It was more like a, a, an MMA match. And, I, you know, unfortunately, I think it made all three of those guys look fairly bad. Rubio and Cruz. And, of course, all the, all the pundits after, what they say? Oh, Rubio's best debate. Cruz's best debate. Donald Trump's worst debate by far. That's the media spinning it even more to circumvent your vote. So it's very simple. If the media, if the political pundits, if the political establishment can put enough doubt out there, and there's enough morons out there who currently support Trump, if they say, oh my God, I can't vote for Trump anymore, just 5 6% switch allegiance to somebody else, Trump's a thing of the past. That is circumvention of, in my opinion, the American right or privilege to vote our conscience, to vote our mind, to help this country move forward. So they're not going to come out and say, don't vote. They're going to work the back channels and destroy who the majority of us right now are interested in having as our Republican candidate moving into the general election against Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. Guys, this is Tim from God, Guns, and Good Times. Hey, I really want to thank you for spending, you know, 15, 16 minutes watching this. You have a lot better things to do uh, in your day than watch me yap about this. I really appreciate the fact that you did that. Guys, if you like the video, please click like. If you have comments, look down below and put your comments in. Good comments, bad comments. I'm a big boy. I can take it. I really appreciate you doing that for me and taking the time. Guys, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to do a lot more videos, not just about politics. I'm going to do videos about a lot of different things. Again, thanks, guys. I appreciate you taking the time and watching this. Have a great day. And vote your head, your heart, and your conscience. Have a great day.